Hey, and welcome once again to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman, and today we are in we're in Revelation chapter seven as we continue to walk through this uh, this vision that that John has given about things that are to come. And in Revelation seven, we see the one hundred and forty four thousand. These are uh, identified as Jewish celibate men that God chooses in an instant to know him and to be witnesses for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we see this vision of, again, back in the throne room of heaven. And we, we again, have a, a wonderful vision of the, this, uh, the majesty of God and his goodness, his kindness, his love toward his people. And so let's pick up today. We're in verse 9 to start. And this is what John writes. He says, after this, I looked. After the 144,000, he says, I looked. And behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice. Now notice, this is, this is the, the eternal state of people from every single people group. You know, God is going to have people from every single tribe, tongue, and nation surrounding his throne. Well, what, what, let's continue. And here's what they, they cry out. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their face before the throne and worshipped God. Once again, this... Uh, recognition of God's goodness, his faithfulness, his sovereignty. It results in just straight up worship. Here's what they say. Saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. I just, I love that. Listen to what they say again. They say, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God Forever and ever, so be it. Amen. I mean, they're just, they're just using as much descriptive words as they can to describe what God is worthy of. Verse 13. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? And John, he says, Sir, you know. And he, the elder, continued, and he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They, they have the, the grace of Jesus upon them. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They've gone through a traumatic, terrible time. And yet God has delivered them to himself and they will now forever be sheltered in his presence. Verse 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor, in, or, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. The shepherd is the lamb. The lamb is a shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Uh, this is this is the promise. John sees a vision of what God will do in Christ. Now, even for those who suffer during the tribulation, who come to faith in the tribulation, and ultimately are rescued into the presence of God where, where the Lamb will be the shepherd. Jesus will shepherd us and all who trust in him for all eternity, uh, leading us to springs of living water, wiping away every tear. You know, church, I, I just want to remind you that the, the suffering that you go through, uh, this is a future suffering for, for those in the tribulation, but, but the, the same applies. The suffering that you go through, one day it will be remedied. One day justice will roll out, roll down like a mighty river, and you and I, those who trust in Christ, those who have been washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we will, we will live in forever peace with everything that we ever need being met in our Savior. Now, here's what I want to return to. Remember their, their response was to issue praise upon praise upon praise. 
You know, this isn't just something saved for the, the future. This is something we participate in right now. People from every tribe, tongue, and nation will one day surround the throne and we will offer praise upon praise upon praise. But right now, we are a people who should be doing the exact same thing. So let me encourage you. Uh, let me encourage you. Lift your voice to the Lord. When you gather with your church this weekend, lift your voice unashamedly. Recognize that he is worthy of all praise and honor and, and let your voice join with the voices that are one day going to be surrounding this throne, praising God for all that he has done for us in Christ. This is our ancient way for our modern day.